Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for your mercy, for your love, for your grace. Thank you because you are always there with there for us. We bless your name. We worship you. We say take all glory, honor, praises, adorations in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for what you did in the morning. Thank you, Father, for what you did in the evening. Thank you, Father, because of what you are going to do now. All oh, glory to your holy name. You are the mighty God. You are the great God. You are uncomparable God. Nobody can be compared with you. Accept our thanks, accept our praises, accept our adorations in Jesus' name. If in this lecture right now, we invite you, come and teach us in the name of jesus christ make your word to be known unto us in the name of jesus christ we thank you heavenly father we bless your holy name lord because we know you have answer in jesus mighty name we pray and the people of god say amen hallelujah yesterday by the grace of god we start to be discussing about how to receive the revelational gifts. Turn your Bible with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I read verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I read verse 8. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I read verse 8. Are you there? And to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. So yesterday, to the glory of God, we explained to us that it is the Holy Spirit that gives the word of wisdom. And we said the Holy Spirit deal with individual. That's why he said in that place, for to one is given so he deal with individual he doesn't deal with a group he doesn't deal with a church he doesn't deal with a collection of people he deal with individual and he meets with he meets you at the point of your name based on your desire on your desire and we try to define word of wisdom yesterday we said the word there means a piece of information and we say the wisdom means ability to act wisely. So to the glory of God, we are be able to explain to us how to receive the word of wisdom. Yesterday, we say you must have a burning desire for the word of wisdom. And having burning desire, that desire must translate into prayer. Prayer. Look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, I read verse 24. Mark chapter 11, I read verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what is whoever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye say, have them. Look at that verse 24 again. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire so the desire must be translated to prayer whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray not if you pray you must pray you must find time to pray you must schedule time to pray you must call upon the holy ghost to pray so there must be prayer there must be what? There must be intense prayer. Not just prayer. It must be a prayer of faith. Look at that 24 again. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe. It must be a prayer of faith. Not just crying. Not just talking. You must believe that the Holy Ghost is hearing you and he will grant your request. He say, therefore I say unto you, what is whoever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye say, have them. You must believe first before you see. When you pray, you must believe that you have received them before you have them. 
there is difference between receiving and having. Hallelujah. Receiving, you receive by faith. You receive by faith. Having is a practical possession of what you have requested. But receiving, you receive it by faith. You believe God has answered you. Look at First John. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Open your Bible together with me. First John chapter 5. Look at chapter 5. I read verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. Are you there with me? Uh, verse 14, rather. Are you there with me? First John chapter 5, verse 14. Look at what he said. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if he asks anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Is it the will of God that you should have the word of wisdom? Is it the will of God that you should manifest the word of wisdom? Look at First Corinthians. First Corinthians, I read chapter 14. First Corinthians, I read chapter 14, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 14, I read first one. Look at first one. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are the will of God for your life. And spiritual gifts, including the word of wisdom. And the Bible said this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Because what you are asking for is according to the will of God. You can be very sure that God will grant your request. Now, the motive why you are asking is also important. Because if the motive is not correct, you may not receive. Look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Open your Bible together with me. James chapter 4. Hallelujah. James chapter 4. Look at verse 3. Are you there with me? He said, Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your laws. The motive here is not correct. Why do you want the word of wisdom? Is it for you to be boasting about? Is it for you to show that I'm a, I'm a man of God? Or is it for the expansion of the kingdom of God? Is it for the enrichment of the people of God? Is it to be able to help the needy? Why are you looking for the word of wisdom? The motive you are seeking for it is important. If you are going to get it, you must get your motive right. What is your motive? Why do you want the word of wisdom? Is it because you want to use it for the expansion of the kingdom of God? Is it because you want to use it to bless the work of God? Why are you looking for the word of wisdom? There must be a motive. And if the motive is not correct, you may not get it. What is your motive? Look at 1 King. 1 King, I read chapter 3. First King chapter 3. Open your Bible together with me. First King chapter 3. Are you there? Hallelujah. First King chapter 3. Look at verse 5. Are you? And in Gibeon. First 5. And in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask, what shall I give thee? Look at verse 6. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, 
according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and, and thou hast cared for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is today as it is as it is this day <clears throat> verse 7 and now O lord my god thou hast made thy servants instead of david my father and i am but a little child I know not how to go out to or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, we thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. First night, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge these, these, these thy so great people, and the speech Please the law that Solomon asked this thing. Look at verse 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor asked the life of thy enemy, but hast asked for thyself understanding to design judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding act. So that there will be none like thee before, neither after thee, so any rise like unto thee. And also are given thee that we thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. God saw that the motive for King Solomon was correct. God saw that the motive of King Solomon is okay. So he granted unto him wisdom. Why are you asking for the word of wisdom? Is it for boasting? Is it for boasting? Or is it for winning so? Is it for expanding the kingdom of God? Is it because you love the people you want to help them? Why are you asking for the word of wisdom? Your motive will determine whether you will have it or not. What's the motive? You must get the motive correctly before the Lord will release that gift unto you. What is the motive? Number one, you pray in faith. Number two, you must have correct motive. Number three, you must know it is the will of God for you to have all the spiritual gifts. Because the word of God commanded you, you say, desire spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, desire spiritual gifts. It is the will of God. The Bible will not ask you to desire something that is against the will of God. So spiritual gifts are the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if you must pray in faith, if you must receive, you must make sure that your heart is right. In other war, you don't have anything against anybody. Look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Open your Bible together with me. Mark chapter 11, I read verse 24. Are you there with me? Therefore I say unto you, what is, what is whoever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye say have them. Look at verse 25. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. Verse 26. Are you there? But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Yet you are praying for the gift of the word of wisdom. You must never have anything in mind against anybody. Your heart must be filled with love. Your heart must be saturated with love. So therefore, before you pray for the word of wisdom, the first thing you must take care of is this. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I read first one. Are you there? God bless you. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, first one. First one, look at it. Let's read it together. Are you there? Look at first one. He said, follow after charity. That's the condition. That's the condition. 
You must make sure that your heart is filled with love. You must make sure your heart is filled with the love of God, charity, love. 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 That's the first thing that must be in your heart before you started praying for spiritual gifts. Your heart must be saturated with love. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Look at verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have no charity. I'm becoming as a sandy brass or a tinkly cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mystery, to understand all mystery means you have the word of wisdom. It is what we make you to understand mysteries. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mystery, and all knowledge, and though I have forfeit, so that I can remove money, and I have no charity, I am nothing. So false and formal, you need charity. False and formal, your heart must be saturated with the love for God. False and formal, your heart must be circumcised. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Open your Bible together with me. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 30, I read verse 6. Look at verse 6. He said, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with that, that with all thy soul, that thou mightst live. You need circumcision of heart. The Adamic nature needs to be uprooted out of your life. That tendency to sin, that tendency to hate, that tendency to be proud, that tendency to, to manifest the work of flesh must be removed out of your heart. So that the heart can be saturated by the love of God. He says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. You need circumcision of heart. The Adamic nature, the root of sin, must be removed out of your life. That principle of sin, that is called body of sin, must be uprooted out of your life. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, I read verse 11. Are you there with me? Colossians chapter 1, I read verse 11. Open your Bible together. Hallelujah. Look at verse 11. Are you there with me? Are you there with me? Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, rather. Are you there with me? He said, in whom also... Ye are circumcised with uncircumcision, made without hand, in putting up the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. He said, You put off the body of sin, the principle of sin, the inbred sin, that sin, that propensity to sin in you is uprooted. It is uprooted. It is after it is uprooted that your heart will be filled with love. You love enemy, you love friend, you love everybody. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, I read verse 44. Oh, let me read from verse 43. Matthew chapter 5, open your Bible together with me. Hallelujah. Look at verse 43. Ye have heard. That it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love thy, love your enemy, bless them that cause you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Your heart must be filled with love. You must love enemy. You must love friends. You must bless enemy. People that hate you, you bless them. People that use you despisely, you pray for them. Everybody, you must love them, both foes and friends. It is when your heart is saturated with the love of God. It is after that time you are ready for the word of wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
it is there you are ready you are ready you are ready for the word of wisdom and when you pray like that you will have a living faith a living what a living faith because faith worketh by love galatians chapter 5 verse 6 look at galatians chapter 5 i read verse 6 faith worketh by love Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Open your Bible together with me. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Hallelujah. Look at verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but faith which walketh by law. Your faith will only walk. There will be no doubt in your heart. Only when your heart is filled with love, not when it is filled with hatred, not when it is filled with unforgiving spirit, not when it is filled with sin, not when it is filled with immoral thought. What was it filled with sinful thought? But when it is filled with love, then you'll be able to believe God without any doubt. Mark 11. Mark 11. Open your Bible, verse 24. Are you there with me? Mark 11, verse 24. Are you there? See, verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things you ever, what, what things you ever you desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Once you have the faith, once you believe it is done, once you accept the fact that God has answered your prayer and your mind is at rest, don't worry. Just trust God. The gift of the word of wisdom will begin to manifest in your life in Jesus' name. He said, if you, if you, if you believe that you have received it, yes, I have there. After believing, the next thing is having. Ye shall have them. Having them is the manifestation, practical manifestation in your life. And very, very soon, you begin to see the manifestation. And after this, and you call upon heaven, and as a matter of fact, I am praying for you right now. Just make sure no hatred in your heart. Just make sure no unforgiving spirit in your heart. Just make sure you have a right heart. As I pray for you, that power will come upon you in Jesus' name. Make sure your motive is right. You want to use it for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Not for pride, not for any other thing. For the glory of God. Make sure your motive is right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for prayer? I say, are you ready for prayer? That gifts will come upon you right now. You will receive the word of wisdom right now. Because it is the will of God. Because it's the will of God. God wants you to have it. That's why he said, desire spiritual gifts. Are you ready? Get ready as I pray for you. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, all power in heaven and on the earth belongs unto you. I am praying for my brethren right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that there will be a release outpouring of the gift of the word of wisdom upon them in jesus name holy spirit divine release this precious gift right now release it right now into their life in the name of jesus the bible say you distribute to every man as you will let it be your will today that everybody that is hearing my voice will receive this spirit precious gift in the name of jesus I decree right now, receive it in the name of Jesus. 
Receive it in the name of Jesus. Let the word of wisdom begin to manifest in your life. Let your spiritual eyes be hopeful to be able to see the future. Let your spiritual ears be hopeful to be able to hear what is coming in the future. Receive it in Jesus' name. I thank you, my Father, my God, because I know you've done it already. All glory, all honor, all adorations be to your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And the people of God say, Amen.